So this is my uh, office desk for the day. I'm out field collecting. And I'm going to show, demonstrate what I do for a living now. Started out as a volunteer. But, uh, <clears throat> so anyways, to the left there is a kick net. Um, certain state protocols for uh, this type of biological stream monitoring, which is the collection here, it's the collection of uh, benthic macroinvertebrates, mayflies, stoneflies, and caddisflies that live on the bottom of lakes, rivers, and streams. So based on the community structure at a particular station or location, um, the uh, biological community can determine or does determine the overall water quality that's been uh, coming off of the, the within the watershed, the, the drainage area um, for the past six months to a year. Uh, US EPA and states um, as well as um, other countries use this type of biological monitoring to monitor overall water quality. Here I happen to be in the state of Vermont doing a project for um, the Hoosick River Watershed Association. It's a nonprofit organization. This is uh, part of the um, Hoosick River Watershed, which encompasses three states in Massachusetts, Vermont, and New York. Um, this particular stream is uh, one of the headwaters of the of the Hoosick, which actually is a headwater of the Willemsack, which is a major tributary of the Hoosick. I'm lucky today. It's a it's a gorgeous uh, September day, and um, I only have a few sites to collect. This will be my last site of the day, and it's only 9:30 in the morning. Then I'll go back to the office and work. So anyways, the kick nets there on the left, um, there's uh, two, I have two um, water quality parameter probes. Um, I'll demonstrate that in the field. The YSI, um, these bags here and here. Um, this is a spray bottle to uh, sanitize uh, my boots and gears after a, a stream to make sure I'm not transporting any invasive species from one water body to the next. Ethyl alcohol I use to preserve the uh, macroinvertebrates, and these are the containers that are used to store, put the macroinvertebrates in after collecting. And that's an example of a collected sample. So it has uh, the name, the date, um, our uh, our lab's ID number, and we'll process that this this fall and winter, and write a report based on on what we uh, we identify from the sample location. Use the pan in the field, uh, the white pan in the field, to uh, look at the invertebrates. We do a field assessment. We'll take a closer look at the bugs um, once I collect them. So we usually have to just take samples. Um, they're usually located near major roads and abutments of bridges and such. Um, this is a, a relatively pristine location which uh, is nice to be able to come out and enjoy this type of habitat. A lot of action there. I have one there, another one there. It's just all up the creek side. There is this old logging road that I'm walking down now. It goes along the stream, um, but you can see the general. Uh, Riparian habitat is pretty uh, forested. So we're going to collect, we're going to come down here to this um, riffle. Streams have pools, riffles, runs, 
uh, this is a nice riffle here. There's a nice pool right here. And I bet there's some nice trout in here as well. But um, we're going to collect a sample here. I'll demonstrate collecting. I'll show you what I collect. And we're going to do the water uh, chemical parameters or water parameters, take their measurements, and I'll do a basic habitat survey. One of the first things I gain is I'll take an upstream and downstream photograph to document. Stonefly, and there's two nice large ones here. Stonefly's uh, presence in the field assessment will give this site uh, station assessment a very good. Stoneflies in general are intolerant to most pollutants, um, especially lowering dissolved oxygen levels, which result from various aspects of your organic material or photosynthesis or lack thereof. So their presence here is, is good. There's also some mayflies swimming around. You can see in the background they're much smaller than uh, the, the large stonefly that's right here. So 
So what we end up doing is taking the sample and preserving it and bringing it back to the lab. We pick through the debris and we pick these organisms out and then we identify them usually to genus and species level. And then everything gets converted to numbers. Each organism has been assigned um, a tolerance value to organic pollutants, and then there's other metrics that are utilized to come up with a, um, an overall water quality score. There's a black fly larva to the right, about one o'clock. That's a uh, Philopotamidae, probably uh, Camara or Diphylodes there, the orange one, about 8 o'clock, right in the center. Oh, and, that, and that's a black, another black fly larva. The black fly larva are reaching to uh, spin another mat of silt. Right now it's uh, adhered to the bottom of the, uh, the, the pan with a silt mat. It'll move across the bottom of the pan like an inchworm. There's some dated mayflies down there at 4 o'clock. Uh, did you see that black fly larva move? He's spinning a mat right now. There he goes. And that's what they do in the, on the uh, rocks. Spins a mat, reaches out, spins a, a mat of silk, holds onto it with its pro legs and pulls its hind legs up. Look how fast he's going. If they're dislodged um, from a rock in the stream, they'll do just what a spider does is spin a mat, or I mean uh, a thread, a tether, and it can inch its way back up um, from its original spot in the, in the stream column. There's a great video of it um, on Planet Earth by BBC. What I'm doing is I'm recording the presence of uh, the organisms that I collected. Ephemeroptera, Cocoptera, Trichoptera, those are mayfly, stoneflies, and caddis. I saw Megaloptera and Chironomidae. Um, so I'll rate this uh, location based on the presence of uh, the three major, major uh, and most sensitive groups of organisms, the mayfly, stoneflies, and caddis. The EPT taxa is very good. The actual final assessment may uh, change by uh, a category. I'm just marking this is a good habitat. It's actually excellent. I'd love to come back fishing here. I don't have a Vermont fishing license though. I'll also record uh, additional information, including the site photos. Uh, I'll do a basic habitat assessment of, of the stream bank, uh, the width of the, uh, the stream, the depth. So the sample gets an internal label. And they're pre-labeled. At the office, we put the data on them in the field. It's an internal label and an external label. And then it gets filled with ethyl alcohol to kill all the organisms. And then we'll go back to the lab and get logged in and processed. That'll be in my uh, part two video. We'll roll it to distribute the alcohol throughout.
And that's it. Another day at the field office.